uh, a very good evening everyone so before moving on today's my topic uh, let me introduce myself uh, i am dr umang bhat i am a cardio respiratory physiotherapist and working here in un meta institute of cardiology and research center since last 13 years so today's my topic is on the basic shoulder exercises after cardiac surgeries now the first question the first very basic question is what do you do, what do you mean by cardiac surgeries uh how do you define it uh so they say cardiac surgery is the specialty of medicine concerning the surgical treatment of pathologies related to the heart and thoracic aorta in layman term if i explain then um, uh, any surgery related to cardiac that means heart is called cardiac surgeries right now since you know what is cardiac surgery what do you mean by cardiac surgery now another question which has to be arise is uh, what are the different cardiac surgeries so the different cardiac surgeries which we come across in our day to day life are cabg that is coronary artery bypass graft mitral valve repair or replacement uh, aortic valve repair or replacement double valve repair or replacement here mitral and aortic both valve uh, can be replaced or in some cases uh, one single valve uh, one valve is repaired and another is replaced it depends on condition of patients and depends on the uh, Uh, the pathology is related to that particular patient apart from that aortic aneurysm uh, decortication pneumonectomy lobectomy out of all the surgeries the decortication pneumonectomy and lobectomies are considered as thoracic surgery the rest are considered as cardiac surgeries now uh, since my topic is regarding the basic shoulder exercises after cardiac surgeries uh wo, there has to be a question like uh, what is the prevalence of shoulder movement uh, after cardiac surgeries why shoulder movement and its uh, uh, all the activities are quite important uh, in any cardiac surgeries so to prove that i have got some uh, studies and uh, 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 globally there have been uh, lots of studies which has taken place till today which are proving that uh, the prevalence of cardiac uh, prevalence of shoulder movement after cardiac surgery is quite important but here i have picked up one or two studies from them uh, one study which is uh, st- uh, which which i have got it here is uh, done by jennifer gordon and their team this particular study was performed over a group of 70 patients and the study showed that the occurrence of shoulder pain in the study was quite higher than the reported in general population the shoulder pain in the study from the cardiac surgery patients were having almost 47% which was uh, almost 6 to 9 6.9 to 29% in general population who were not undergone any kind of surgeries and this number itself was quite quite high uh, from their pre- uh, from their own previous studies uh, previously it was almost 16 to 30 6% see when there is any study we uh, we won't get any kind of particular numbers it will be always ranges so here also range is given like 16 36% and 6.9 to 29% so the range will be there uh, after that uh, the link is given below if anyone wants to go in detail uh, they can refer to there Uh, another study which i have picked up here is from india only and the study was uh, the study was performed by manohar shifa and their team this study was exclusively performed over a patients of cabg only and uh, they found after their uh, at the end of their study what they found that uh, occurrence of shoulder disorder among post cabg patients was 36% here also they have got the very high numbers of shoulder disorder post operative uh, post operative cardiac surgeries so basically predominance of shoulder disorder was found at the time of 3 to 4 months after cabg so it's not like a, uh, immediately after discharge or uh, one or two week after discharge they were having the shoulder disorder or any pain in shoulders but it was like almost 3 to 4 months after cabg uh, this study also uh, the link has been given below in case if anyone want to go and defer in detail now since we know the prevalence and importance of shoulder movement and its movement and shoulder joint after cardiac surgery now the second thing is risk factors which may affect shoulder joint and its movement uh, there are multiple risk factors which might affect shoulder joints and its movement post cardiac surgeries uh, one of them is incision 
incision is something which is which which will be there in any surgery and it's like something which we cannot uh, uh, escape right so incision is directly not uh, is considered as one of the risk factor but when incision is made on any muscle then the muscle action will be lost or it will be impaired so it can be one of the risk factors so what are the different uh, incisions which we come across in uh, cardiac surgeries the first one is median sternotomy so median sternotomy is a surgical procedure in which a vertical inline incision is made along with the sternum and it divided a sternum into two parts with a, with a cutter right and the incision is the, the incision should extend from just below the sternal notch and it's long last till few centimeters below xiphoid process now when medium sternum is pro, uh, medium sternotomy is performed uh, this is the only incision when there is no muscle cut directly involvement of any muscle uh, here uh, uh, surgeons uh, make an incision on directly on sternum so there is no direct uh, involvement of any muscles but uh, when there are some advantage uh, uh, it it also have some disadvantages disadvantages may include like um, uh, non healing of sternum in case of osteoporotic patients or old age patients when there is a poor healing and apart from then when the surgeons are uh, uh, completing the surgery they join the sternum by sternal wires so when their wires are included uh, there are chances that uh, infection can take place at a wound site if the care is not taken properly so these are also the disadvantages uh, median sternotomy is one of the most widely used the incision in all over the world it gives best exposure to the uh, heart and uh, other organs like lung now the second incision is posterolateral thoracotomy a thoracotomy is a surgical procedure in which a cut is made between the ribs to see and reach the lungs or other organs in the chest or thorax in this uh, uh, incision uh, two major muscles which are getting affected are latissimus dorsi and serratus anterior as i mentioned earlier when there is a cut in any muscle or is when it is an incision the muscle loss is pro loss is property and the power also get decreased by one point so suppose there is a power of 5 or 5 in a muscle pre operatively then after operation or after surgery the muscle power would be around 3 plus or 4 so latissimus dorsi and serratus anterior both muscle will be impaired and the uh, muscle actions which are associated with this particular two uh, muscles will be affected for example serratus anterior is responsible for overhead abduction in um, uh, in a patient so this activity will be impaired and latissimus dorsi which is exclusively uh, uh, responsible for shoulder extension so patient will be having a issue for performing shoulder extension or uh, overhead abduction post surgery now another incision is anterolateral thoracotomy this is also one of the part of thoracotomy here uh, in this uh, in the emergency setting it allows rapid access to the uh, left chest the pericardium and also the iota it is the incision of choice for open lung biopsy especially in sick patients who would not be able to tolerate single lung anesthesia now apart from this if any patient is needed to go for a reduced surgery like reduced cbg or reduced mvr or any any surgery uh, and in that case uh, when the bones are not good osteoporotic bones are there or, or any old patient is there when the surgeon are suspecting that uh, a wound healing or a reunion of the bone sternum would not be possible or it won't, it won't be easy in this kind of cases uh, when there is median sternum it is not possible uh, then this uh, this surgery or sorry this incision will be a cho uh, choice of incision for the surgeon this incision anterolateral thoracotomy is divided into two types uh, one is supramammary and inframammary. Second is inframammary. Supramammary is between second and third rib, while inframammary is overlying fifth rib. In this muscle, uh, in this incision, uh, the main muscle which are affected, uh, which are affected is, is so pectoralis major and pectoralis minor. These both muscles are directly uh, involved in shoulder movements, like pectoralis major is uh, involved in the abduction and horizontal abduction and internal rotation and uh, pectoralis minor is uh, responsible for scapular inward or downward rotation protraction 
and uh, lateral rotation of scapula and it stabilizes scapula too so all these movements uh, affect uh, will be affected post surgery and the muscle power as i mentioned before muscle power will be lost so strengthening of this muscle has to be our aim uh, so that post operatively uh, we can gain back uh, the patient's range of motion like uh, any other normal people now what are the other risk factors other risk factors is like uh, activity restrictions here what happens uh, it is the human tendency that uh, when there is a cut or incision on any on our body then we tend to restrict that particular muscles action we tend to restrict that particular part of our body so that what we tends to do is uh, we restrict performing normal uh, we restrict performing uh, uh, all exercise all activities at particular parts so it leads to restriction in performing normal our basic adls uh, which may lead to muscle weakness and disuse atrophy and that there it will be converted into restriction restriction of our range of basic range of motion uh, so uh, this kind of all, all these issues will be lead, will be lead to uh, conditions like frozen shoulder apart from this chest binder related activities restrictions uh, when we when uh, we uh, ask patient to bind a chest uh, bind a chest binder uh, uh, along them all the day and night uh, whenever they are moving around and we advise them to do it for 3 months so uh, what we see is, is uh, there are some patients who actively co get conscious because of chest binder and they restrict their movements so what happens in this kind of cases in these patients they ultimately uh, restrict their movements and and uh, at the end it will be again leading to uh, weakness and issues atrophy and the range of motion will be impaired uh, the next is wound infection over incision site uh, as i mentioned there there are long incisions uh, made in uh, cardiac surgery so if the care is not taken properly if there is issue in dressings and all post operatively then wound infection can take place and in case of wound infection muscle action and uh, shoulder movements will be restricted apart from this in case of sternotomy wire migration median sternotomy i am talking about wire migration into ascending aorta pulmonary artery main bronchus and right ventricular or pleural space is possible so this is also one of the risk factors of median sternotomy uh, apart from all these risk factors there are few uh, like uh, postural abdominitis such as kyphotic and scoliotic type of patients may have difficulties in getting back uh, their normal range of motion and strength because of their musculoskeletal limitations compared to uh, compared to normal people uh, and the last one is diabetic patients so as we know that diabetes patients are having a, a slow uh, improvement compared to other people uh, the one of the study shows that according to reports there is a higher prevalence of shoulder disorder in these patients uh, it is almost around 27.5% compared with the rate of 5% which is nothing compared to the high diabetes patient in a medical uh, in general people and uh, the diabetic patients uh, are tend to get frozen shoulder and rotator cuff disease quite often compared to other people now what can be done to prevent all these risk factors or whatever uh, are the whatever risk factors are possible to get after surgery what can be done what can we, we do to prevent them preoperative ergonomic advice may help patients to overcome these post-operative measures uh, pre-op strengthening exercises of targeted muscle groups which might get affected after surgery so they are regaining ideal range of motion uh, muscle action uh, after surgery don't be a daunting task uh, as I mentioned earlier that uh, we know in uh, media, uh, median sternotomy, uh, sorry, in, in, in uh, lateral thoracotomy and posterolateral thoracotomy, the particular muscles are getting affected. So if we target those muscles if in prior, if we train those muscles, so it, it won't be that much hard for that, those muscles to get trained postoperatively and uh, it will be quite easy for all those patients to get their range of motion back. Now some instructions and advices which has to be followed strictly like avoid lifting weight, avoid bending forward, sleep on your back only, no sideline position at least for 3 months, wearing chest binder at least for 3 months and especially when they are traveling. 
uh, no driving at least for six months. Apart from these, uh, we advise our patients to when they that uh, when they wake up from the bed and when they uh, sit uh, when they come to, to sitting position from lying down, they are advised to go on the sideline and then they take a support from their hand and they they, they can come into sitting position. They should not directly come from uh, uh, supine line to sitting. Now, what even uh, what if even after following all the advices and protocols, if patients still have any complaints about their shoulder movements? There are some basic shoulder exercises which we which can be followed strictly under supervision of qualified physiotherapist. Here, I'm when, when I'm mentioning under supervision of qualified physiotherapist, I'm literally meaning that it has to be under some supervision because in, uh, we have seen some patients and we have seen some cases that when patients are performing exercises on their uh, on their own at their home they might lead to some other issues like uh, they keep on performing wrong exercises and, it will, and uh, this may lead to them uh, for other shoulder uh, deformities or shoulder pain so the basic exercises are like shoulder flexion exercises is nothing but we have to uh, take our hand uh, uh, straight away, uh, straight, uh, straight away up uh, from our side. It can be done with the help of other hand also. As you can see in figure A and B, uh, we can by holding our other hand, we can lift our hand up. It can be done in supine and sitting also, whichever position is comfortable for patients. But one thing which has to be keeping in mind is that uh, it has to be done in uh, pain-free range only. Patients should perform this exercise in pain-free range only. They should not enter pain. Uh, gradually, as pain subsides, they can increase their range of motions. Another uh, one format is uh, one trick is given in the figure that uh, they can drag their hand on the wall uh, so that uh, gradually, with the help of the wall and with the support, they can increase the range of motion, of um, and they can do the flexion exercises shown like here. Now shoulder extension exercises. Here, uh, patient have to take their hand back from the shoulder. Uh, uh, in extension exercises, when patients are performing, uh, the when uh, their hands are coming uh, from flexion to neutral, it is also considered extension also uh, extension only. Uh, apart from this, uh, as you can see in figure. Uh, it can be performed by holding a stick. They can simply sway back their hands. So extension will be take place, in, and and uh, all the muscle responsible for extension extension of shoulder will be get activated and will be and it will be strengthened. Apart from this, uh, shoulder internal and external rotation. It is nothing but when uh, we keep our elbow in and out after uh, elbow joint uh, keeping in 90 degree, when we move it in and out, it will be take, considered as internal and external rotation. When the hand is coming inside, it is said internal rotation and if it is going outside, it is said external rotation. Uh, it can be performed in um, on their own also when they are uh, when, when they can do it uh, in a proper manner uh, and at home they can do it by uh, holding the towel as is seen in figure 1 and 2 when they are moving the towel up and down it will be both the internal and external rotation external rotation will be performed while going down it will be external rotation and while giving uh, while coming that towel up it will be internal rotation as i discussed earlier internal and external rotation now shoulder abduction exercises. Shoulder ex abduction exercises are nothing but just taking their hand up from the sideways. Uh, it can be performed on the uh, when the uh, when patient is uh, pain free and uh, when there is no issue while uh, performing these exercises. It can be done at the home also while uh, while holding TheraBend in later stage to uh, gain strength. Uh, uh, apart from sideways, when patients take their hand from side to in, it is said that uh, uh, horizontal adduction and abduction. Now shoulder adduction exercises. As I mentioned earlier, like shoulder internal and external rotation, shoulder adduction and abduction can be performed simultaneously at the same time. When patient, when abducted arm is taken back to normal position, it is said uh, adduction. Uh, apart from this addu sideways adduction, when patient perform this in horizontal plane, it is said it is said like uh, horizontal adduction and abduction. 
it can be performed by the help of theraband when it is tied on uh, some uh, wall and other hand can be other another end of the theraband we can uh, patient can hold and take them in and out according to their uh, strength and uh, pain now apart from all these exercises shoulder shrugging exercise are also important it can be performed uh, on their own only in these exercises calorie and upper trapezius are getting strength uh, getting strength then so this is also one of the best exercise to perform after cardiac surgeries uh, in later stages uh, therapists can press the shoulder shoulder against resistance and uh, to strengthen more uh, according to patient strength uh, we can apply pressure so that strengthening can be can be done Apart from exercises, what there are some instances or there are some cases when patients get stuck with limited range of motion even after doing exercises and find difficulty in their ADLs, and uh, they may lead to conditions like frozen shoulder. So what happens? So what if when the patient returns to our department with frozen shoulder? What we have to do to so in case of frozen shoulder to improve joint mobility and range of motion, we can go for mobilization and gliding. Uh, superior inferior and anterior posterior glide is quite important said to be quite important and uh, uh, it's uh, it uh, literally help patients to get their range of motion and mobility now what in case of pain so even after performing all exercises even after measure, taking all measures what if patient still uh, perceive complaints persisting persisting pain so what can be done uh, so to overcome the pain uh, we can give sh uh, short wave diathermy uh, interventional therapy uh, infrared radiations this all the modalities physiotherapy modalities can play a vital role to subside pain apart from this tense is also can be given to overcome sternal pain after medi median sternotomy we have seen that we have come across many cases like when patients keep on complaining of sternal pain even after performing surgeries like one or two weeks of post discharge so in this case of patient tense can be an important play an important role to overcome this uh, median sternotomy pain Okay, that's it. Thank you.